Good afternoon and welcome to today's webcast, Telecommunications Increase Agility with Operational Data. Before we begin, I'm going to play a brief housekeeping video. Welcome and thank you for viewing our webcast series. Before we begin, please keep the following in mind. You can customize how you view our presentation and interact with the presenter. For better viewing, close all other applications and turn up your speaker volume. You can adjust window size and placement or enter full screen mode using the controls at the top right of the window or dragging the bottom right hand corner to resize. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see a series of icons that relate to a different aspect of our session. You can download a PDF of today's slides from the slide deck and handouts widget. You can ask questions by typing in the Q&A window and clicking submit. We'll do our best to answer all questions or follow up via email. If you experience technical difficulty, refresh your browser by hitting the F5 key. This presentation is not legal, investment, or accounting advice. We encourage you to seek the counsel of a professional service provider to apply this content to your specific circumstances. And with that, I am pleased to introduce today's presenters from Moss Adams. Lauren Den Herter, Managing Director, and Aaron Tyler, Senior Manager. Lauren is a firm leader of business intelligence and corporate performance management. He helps businesses improve their processes, become more efficient, and make better decisions. Aaron has specialized in business intelligence and data analytics since 2016. He has extensive experience analyzing and interpreting data relative to his clients' business and industry goals. Aaron provides clients with a competitive advantage by making data solutions more accessible for their business. His projects bring operational data and management insights to decision makers in industries ranging from agriculture to financial services. And with that, Aaron, I'll turn it over to you to get us started. All right, thank you, Emily. And as Emily mentioned, I am a senior manager. I sit in the Seattle office, and the bulk of the work I've done over the last several years has been in telecommunications. Also done some work in power and utilities and uh, tree fruit, um, probably at probably 85% really on telecom. We've seen a lot of really neat uh, client projects and a lot of uh, clients have shared a lot of interesting things with us. Uh, today, what we're foc focusing on is some things that we've heard from people over the last couple of months in terms of just the need to get information more quickly. Uh, we're also gonna talk a little bit about using data to align your business and cover really briefly at the end uh, just business business analytics in general and what some of the tool sets are. Um, as we get ready to start this up, we do have a really quick uh, polling question. No right or wrong answer. Please take a look at this. We're really just trying to get a handle on uh, how you're feeling about your systems and what kind of things uh, you might be looking for. Yeah, and I know, Aaron, what we tend to find when we're talking with um, our clients is um, we'll hear that there's a, a desire to be more data driven or to, you know, there's a, um, they want to leverage data in a better way. And as we drill into those conversations, it ends up um, getting more defined about kind of a focus area. And that's really what we're trying to do here is kind of understand, you know, our audience and is it something that is, you know, an operational in nature? Um, or is it more financial or planning in nature? And um, that there, there is um, data tools and value in all the above. And it's just good as we kind of get into this conversation to understand kind of where our audience is at. Yeah, and we have a number of people who have submitted, I think for time's sake, we're gonna go ahead and continue here in a second. If you haven't, please click through that. And I want to say thank you to everybody for joining us. Uh, this uh, specific webinar is kind of focused on telecom, but a lot of these uh, concepts are broadly applicable, uh, especially around the timeliness of getting information. I think I will go ahead and move us forward. And interesting. So that's, I thought uh, that A and C or one and three, I guess, might have been uh, kind of the leads there, but uh, more than one of those. That's that's very interesting. It's all. 
Yeah, and that is te- what we tend to see is there's you know there's, there's broad interest, and then we end up prioritizing and then working through them with our clients. So, yeah, it's good to know. Yeah, excellent. <clears throat> so as we get started here, one of the things that we've heard uh, quite a bit over the last twelve months specifically is just the need to get information more quickly. We've heard a lot of anxiety from clients around uh, the time that it takes to do uh, reporting on just a regular basis, but also the time that it would take to find specific pieces of information. Um, Part of this is probably driven by just the complexity of it or the systems, the multiple systems in play. Um, Part of it is driven uh, kind of by the specificity of the request uh, and the fact that telecom is kind of complicated by nature. And over the last several years with the changes in the regulatory and funding environments, it's become even more complicated and the need to do things quickly has become even more important. And kind of the specific words that I've heard a number of clients say is that we really feel that the information was stale or, or less useful by the time we were able to get it. And I know that that caused a fair amount of anxiety for them. And to dive a little bit deeper into the timeliness aspect, I'm gonna pass it back to Lauren. Yeah, yeah, thank you for that, Aaron. Um, in general, what we find is that information has a shelf life. And the illustration down below kind of plays that out and then I'll also just tell a story here that you know kind of help illustrate this as well. But what this is um, showing here is that you know as a month progresses, that you know, if you have information inside of that month about how it's progressing, either financially or um, through an operational metric, that you have time to actually make a decision and change the outcome of the month. That often what we see as we come into our and start working with our clients is that the information is collected throughout the month. It's quite a process to get it all pulled together. So when the the month is done, information is pulled together and then it's made available to managers. Managers can see what happened and then decide what they're going to do in the next month um, to either capitalize on what's happening or to you know make a change if that, that is needed. Um, the problem with that is the month is already done that they're reported on and they're already significantly into the next month. So now, if I just tell that same story with data analytics, with automation, If you have the information within the month before the end of the month, you can see a trend happening and then you have time to actually make a decision inside the decision making outcome of that month. And so what we hear time and time again is that CFOs, um, COOs, they, they really need their managers to make kind of one good decision a year. And that tends to pay for it. It's the ROI that pays for the system, and then everything else is gravy. So the you know the whole difference there is just changing the question from what happened to what is happening, and that's what these systems um, can do for us. All right. Thank you, Lauren. And kind of bouncing back to the why is information delayed? So you know, we've kind of taken a little bit of a dive in the timeliness aspect. The things that I've seen a lot, especially in telecommunication, is just the complexity of the system can be, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's a fair number of pieces, and we've seen a variety of different systems in this space. So a lot of experience with NISC's iView system or innovative elation system, and we've also worked through a bunch of other things, CTI and Mac, and a handful of other providers that have really neat offerings like Vertigus and um, you know, Next Tech Pivot. Uh, there's a lot of data out there and a lot of folks have uh, a number of sources and that can really uh, create a little bit of a delay. Uh, there's also just a fair amount of complexity just within NISC uh, or within Innovative, especially if you're looking at something complicated like the billings module uh, or you're trying to kind of assemble a live line count. That can be a very difficult and time consuming process uh, in itself, especially if it's being done kind of an um, uh, a spreadsheet process or a flat report process that can be uh, very difficult. We're seeing a fair amount of movement here towards the need to have a better picture of what the business is doing. And that also uh, you know, usually involves multiple sources, even within NISC or Innovative, it's gonna involve multiple sources and that can really uh, delay the final answer. And then 
just the accessibility and visibility uh, can sometimes be a challenge. In some systems, giving people permissions to see everything that they might need to see can be very challenging. Uh, and the result is that they kind of have, they're kind of stuck with like a tactical view of just their silo and maybe don't see, managers maybe don't see the lateral aspect of the business as easily as they should. And in some cases, those licenses are also very expensive. If you have a very nice uh, provisioning, you know, marketing data system, uh, that license can be very expensive. And the result is perhaps that not, in, not as many people see it as would like to. And so that's kind of, you know, the genesis of what's causing a lot of these delays. Uh, what's the risk of doing that? Well, the risk, as Lauren mentioned, is that you may have a situation that arises where the information is not readily available during the decision-making window or during the optimum uh, decision-making window. And then you're kind of left with one of two choices. Either you're stuck having to make that decision based on kind of a gut instinct or experience base, which can cause uh, some issues, especially as the, the environment continues to get more complex and move even faster. Uh, or you're just you know, not going to make the decision in that window uh, and the decision will uh, either lead to a missed opportunity or kind of a maybe an opportunity that's not as valuable as it would have been earlier. Uh, recently, over the last, I'd say last three or four months, I have seen a number of times where uh, there's been a customer perception problem also uh, that's related to the difficulty in assembling information quickly and whether that's a customer's calling in asking a fairly simple question, it's very difficult uh, to get that answer to them, or if a customer seeking maybe a more, you know, challenging question, say, you know, they're waiting to see like when their fiber build is going to be complete. If that piece of data is off board uh, of your process right now, or it's not being tracked in a way that can be answered quickly, sometimes a customer is going to have a really negative uh, reaction to that. Now, this slide really is just thinking through kind of the differences between. Uh, what we might say is a flat file process or a spreadsheet process um, or a, you know, a printed report process versus uh, moving into some of the more automated tool sets, things like Tableau, Power BI, uh, or Domo, and just thinking about the differences in the processing speed of that is really different. Uh, there's a lot of data management benefits to moving to an automated system. If you've been thinking about that, you can easily see what people are doing. Uh, a lot of times you can give them access to things they wouldn't be able to see otherwise and do it in a really smart way with a lot of good guardrails. Uh, there's a lot of context there that's also not available in a spreadsheet, you know, and I think a lot of times we get habituated to seeing things as kind of two columns as of this period and the previous period. But when you have, uh, you know, more information available in a more interactive format, say a dashboard, uh, you can really drill in and get a lot more context. And this has the effect of allowing for organizational alignment that maybe doesn't exist as easily in a current reporting environment. And something I've seen uh, recently from a couple of different clients is that uh, if there's a debate about the numbers, if there's a question about how we got to this data, um, you know, that's usually caused by either a filtering process or a date process. Uh, that can cause a real rift between people because people are trying to argue uh, two different uh, kind of points with this piece of data and people don't necessarily agree that that piece is correct. And so we need to get to that one source of truth and an automatic system can really help with that. Um, there's some governance that goes around that and we'll cover that a little bit later, but you know, just having one place to go and get the answer is very, very powerful. I'm going to show a couple of examples of some work we did with clients now where timeliness of the information was the most important factor. Uh, maybe these will speak to you. Um, there's there there are edges, you know, into a lot of other subject matters here. But there's two things that we've seen just in the last six months. And in this case, we had a customer that had a fairly complicated system. It was on a state border. They were in two different states, multiple counties. Uh, they had several different municipalities, including one large metro metropolitan area. And the issue they were having is that it was just so complicated to create reports to give to different county agencies that explain who's on non-pay disconnect, who's you know, been built fiber already, what is the status of all these things. Trying to get through all of that information in a timely fashion was really challenging. And I wanna say that they were doing it in spreadsheets and they may have had as many as 80 spreadsheets a month uh, for different reports. And they really specifically brought that to us and said, look, we need to know this now. 
we need a process that works better than that. And we were able to work with them and also work with their provider, which was Innovative Systems, and find a way to get to that data in terms of what it is at this minute and really create a dashboard that is literally live up to the minute. And so that was really neat. Uh, that really sped that process along for them. Uh, and here's another uh, example of something that uh, is generally very complicated in our experience uh, with billing, especially in the telecommunications industry, is that's often the largest data set. And there's lots of pieces here. There's, there's the bill itself, there's the product codes and the customer and the location and the agreement. And all of that, bringing all of that together and sometimes giving a geography also can be really, really helpful. And so very similar request, very complicated uh, system uh, with a very large subsidiary. And the main you know, entity there, the main owners were very concerned that they didn't have a good feeling for how business was going during the course of a the month. They always had felt like they needed to wait until the month closed. Uh, or till the board meeting even to really get a picture of what had happened. And they, they really just felt that that was inadequate and they wanted to speed that up to real time. So we were able to work with them to kind of compile this. Uh, there are much more complicated ways to look at billing um, as well, um, but that's kind of where we left this one. It was hugely impactful for them. I'm gonna pass it back to Lauren to talk a little bit about organizational data. Yeah, thank you, Aaron. So yeah, just. Uh, taking the conversation now towards just high-performing organizations, and this is something that, again, is driven by what we hear is a desire to be data-driven and uh, organizations working to get a definition on what that means for them. And what we've found is that there are some common characteristics of high-performing organizations. And this, so, you know, one is there is a plan that has, you know, overall strategies and um, guidelines and goals within it drive organizational alignment. And with that, that is, um, it's, it's open, it's collaborative, and people can align their individual plans and their departmental plans around that. But at the same time, there's a, you know, ongoing careful measurement of performance and so how did the organization perform? Um, how did it perform in, um, in alignment with the plan? And then with that measurement performance, be able to then make um, very agile decisions about you know, what are the next steps to keep everything on track? Um, another characteristic we see is that um, the people are, they're, um, you know, they're enabled and, and they, um, the ability to make decisions within their area and the information to be able to make decisions within within um, their area of influence and their area of responsibility. And then there's a just open communication so that there is transparency across the organization. So we see these different characteristics um, within a high-performing organization, but what is also in the midst of all of that is the information that ties it all together. And we talk about that as data being the lubricant. So having that plan go to people and to measure against performance is just a lot of data moving back and forth. And doing that in a timely fashion is what really drives effective communication and holds the whole uh, plan together or the whole organization together um, in a very, very high performing way. We step back and we look at that data um, even just saying data is, you know, a bit high level. And so what helps us to drive into that data and it comes down to getting the right information at the right time embedded in the business process. So when you're embedded in the business process, that means you're getting it to the right people. And just to illustrate that a bit, um, we have seen organizations that have, have some real words in their um, over on a monitor somewhere and they're playing, you know, that, that you see that's playing out, but there's nobody looking at it. And so when we look at that, we ask ourselves, what business process is happening right there in front of that monitor? And the answer is often there is, there is none. That's not where the business process is happening. Now, another example is there's this, 
Um, they have, they use SAP. They have um, an, another planning solution. They have a ton of financial information. They also have equipment that is turning off data on a regular basis during operation. They have this wealth of information. This is a huge data warehouse and the like. But what they really needed and what they had a key operational scheduling area where to really be effective in their delivery, um, they needed to know which contractors were staying on schedule and which were affecting the schedule. And then that helped them make scheduling decisions accordingly. And differences in schedule had a large um, impact on the performance of the business. So from just from all the data that was out there, just that one piece of information, helping that one person go through their planning and scheduling activities, paid for all of the ROI of the system, and then everything else was gravy. And the, the entire difference of that was just embedding that one small piece of information right in the middle of the business process. So when we talk about data, what we often want to do is to that it feels like cart before the horse. We want to talk about the business process and then where can we enable that process and make it better with information. So in just looking at that, so what does that do? How does that create value? So it, it's, you know, it is time savings. It is managing by exception, but it's getting back to that, you know, earlier slide where it talks about data has a shelf life or information has a shelf life it's really getting to the point where it's, you can operationalize in a very timely way on what that information is doing for you. Um, this is just another view of a similar thing, but it's looking at it from the ability to pull data together. So um, you know, towards the bottom is tactical things like getting data pulled in, and then the middle is you know, more tactical of you know, pulling reports together and controlling the access to information. And finally, there's um, time to do some analysis on. So that's the current state. And what often happens is that process is so hard just getting data pulled together that it doesn't happen very often. So once a month or something of that nature. If you were to turn that upside down and you just made it way easier to pull the data together and automate that and way easier to get the reports out and automate that, that not only do you have more time to work with what the real analysis is and drive decisions, it happens on a much more frequent basis. And so it, if it happens slowly, then your, your operational blind spot tends to grow. But if you can run this more often and on a regular basis and keep it current, then you don't really have that operational blind spot. You're really running it in near real time. And here's just another um, example here that Aaron can take us through. Thank you, Lauren. So thinking about different ways uh, to get better access to your data, part of it is the way that it's displayed. And there's lots of different ways to do this. There's not really a right or a wrong way. Uh, we do a fair amount of work in reporting. We do a fair amount of work in, in creating visual analytics or dashboards. Uh, but the key here is really uh, thinking about that delivery layer as kind of the last mile. And then the last piece of that is how is the business user going to absorb that information? And for us, when we're building dashboards, we really try to work very extensively with those individuals so that they can see uh, not only the information they need, but they can get the context that they need. And so again, kind of thinking about how we've all been habituated in a sense to uh, kind of two columns of data, this period and the last period. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, newer and more automatic systems will allow you to see a much larger horizon of information. And you can really tell a very neat story with that and you can tailor that story really to the specific user and the process. And so thinking about starting at the business need and then looking at the data, this is the part where that answer comes together. And the cool thing is the system is very flexible. So, you know, typically in uh, the, the course of an engagement, you'll see that during uh, that time, you're going to learn that these specific users at this level of the organization need this very specific tactical thing, and management may need an entirely different answer, may want an entirely different answer. They may want it packaged in a different way. And the tools that are out there today are very, very good at that. Uh, so here on the screen, we have a demo both of Tableau and of some Domo work that we've done in the past. And we've really been able to show many facets of triple tickets or many facets of revenue growth and what that looks like over time. 
And this can be tailored very, very specifically to each individual manager. Uh, and it can also, um, you know, be kind of truncated down. So if you have a board report and you want something very light, you can also do that. Very neat tool sets out there. Um, not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about tools today. Uh, and I'm happy to have that conversation offline. And looking at uh, kind of how a process would run when you do uh, start working in analytics, uh, there it, there's a really big need here not only to start thinking about uh, the business ask, the requirement and that process where we want to seek improvement or we want to use more data, but also to think about it uh, just as a process in general. And from end to end, what are we looking to do? Well, we're looking to bring more context to that information. Uh, there are, like I said, many tools out there available. Uh, virtually all of them have automations. They can almost all save significant amounts of time. Um, and then from our perspective, we're seeing a really big growth now in customers who are very interested in learning a little bit more about uh, kind of the cycle, the business cycle, the interaction between business and data. And the way that has, has really expressed itself is kind of a boom in uh, work that we've done with clients around making sure that the strategy that they have, those goals they have as a company, are really going to be supported well by their systems and their processes and their data. And you know, things that kind of drive that in turn uh, have been uh, generational change, uh, change of ownership, um, uh, desire to make an acquisition, desire to uh, to take some PE funding, uh, lots of those kind of things that really drive this uh, need to see a more data-driven picture. We have heard a variety of reasons why people don't pursue analytics. Um, the first two here are are kind of similar in that regard, that in the, the sense that like. People aren't necessarily sure what the ROI they're going to get is, and they have some anxiety about that. Building a, a business case can be kind of challenging. I have some really specific stories about this. I'm happy to share with uh, folks offline. Um, but like Lauren said, if you can get to one better decision a year, usually the ROI is there. There are different prices for different products, and of course, um, that will drive a little bit of you know kind of like the volume, I guess, of that concern. But we're happy to talk through that with anybody who wants. Generally. Uh, Tableau, Domo, Power BI, they have kind of a sweet spot, and we're happy to discuss that with clients. That third piece, I think, is the one I probably hear the most, which is just like, hey, I, don't, I really don't know how to start this. Uh, when we go into a data uh, project, usually we want to start with an assessment layer. We want to meet people and understand the business needs and the process first, and then kind of help people to prioritize uh, what they would like to accomplish. And that way, we always start with things that are going to be value added from the beginning. Uh, it can be very intimidating to get into some of these systems, even for people who do it a lot. Uh, so if you're seeing that, that's not that's not you. It, it really is very challenging in a lot of cases. Uh, we see people with different capabilities in terms of IT or internal analysts. Um, that's also, you know, some some concern. But I think taking the initial step and moving forward is really the most important first piece. And usually, if there's one voice in a company that wants this, there's actually many people. And as that voice starts to get spread, um, then you know the, the movement towards data and more data-driven uh, usually goes fairly quickly. I'm going to kind of skip over the tools right now. I'm happy to discuss, again, any of those with uh, folks out there. And just thinking about like the end state, again, we're really looking to be a little bit more agile. And Lauren and I are going to tag team through this a little bit. But you know, the real goal is how can I do this faster? How can I automate the stuff that a computer can do and save my people resources for the things that really require a human judgment and experience? Yeah, yeah, thanks for that, Darren. Um, yeah, this agility is really a key thing. And you know, having access to information is really part of that key of agility. You, know, you, you, you can act nimbly. Um, when you have confidence in the data that you have in front of you, and it's very timely, so that you know you're working really with the current situation as the business environment is unfolding. And earlier, I was making a point about um, really focus on the business process and then enable and empower that process with better information. And you know, we find that just looking for those business processes in, in a kind of a wide lens really helps. So the business process might be something operational frontline, 
but you know a board meeting is also an operation it's also a business process you know what information needs to go into that important process in a way that's helpful to that communication or you know it might be in, in the heart of finance and what information is needed um, there and so as we drill into what is the desire to know something um, when we dig into what is the business process that it's supporting that it helps it move beyond interesting to something that's truly actionable. Yeah, and I know Aaron, you have a few more insights on this slide here. Yeah, I think that the data governance is probably like the least fun subject to bring up, but I think that's something also to keep in mind when you're doing a data project, it's really important to think through uh, how we address uh, the access that people have to data and then kind of methodically thinking about what's next, what do we need to support our next business need and what data would we like to see there to make a difference? And then let's look at things that we you know, have had for a long time and if we're not using them anymore, if the process has changed, let's go ahead and, and throw those out. And then I know we're running up against time, so I'll go ahead and move us uh, to the conclusion. And just thinking about uh, what we've kind of covered today is really you know, starting with the business process and really thinking methodically through what that is and how can we power that with data and then how can we automate that to really save time and energy. Um, there is an almost limitless number of uh, performance indicators you can have out there. We really encourage you to methodically uh, select your, your favorites, if you will, and kind of use that as part of your planning thing. Hey, for 2023, we're really focusing on customer delivery timings and stuff like that. You know, Have your top three or five um, and then feel free to cycle through those, you know, throw up the old ones if you need. Uh, thinking about the data availability, the credibility and timeliness, again, that's where uh, that kind of synergy or, you know, disunion can occur a lot of times with data if folks are not agreeing about the numbers. That's the governance aspect. We really need to have one source of truth, one rule for calculating each of these metrics and one uh, source of data to use for it. And then, you know, hey, there's lots of different ways to approach this. There's lots of different uh, services out there and lots of different software. And there's one that'll probably fit just about anybody. And we're happy to discuss that with uh, any of you. Uh, after this, feel free to reach out to Lauren or I, or uh, to the Moss Adams staff with any questions you have. And thank you very much for your time and for joining us today. And with that, right. I'll pass it back to Emily. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron and Lauren, for a great presentation today. Uh, we are out of time. If you had any questions, we'll be happy to follow up with you after the webcast. Here's a link to an online survey where you can provide feedback for today's presentation. Please take a moment to complete this survey as your feedback is very important to us. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you'll join us again next time.